Tectonic Plates 101. Today, we are going to learn how tectonic plates cause earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis. In just the last 70 years, scientists have discovered plate tectonics and continental drift. What are tectonic plates, and how do they cause these natural disasters? My name is Chris, and welcome to Science Talk TV. First, what are tectonic plates? Tectonic plates make up the outermost layer of the Earth, otherwise known as the lithosphere. There are both oceanic plates and continental plates. They are constantly colliding, scraping against each other, and sometimes even running over each other where they overlap. The plates are floating on an almost liquid molten mantle. Here's a cutaway of the Earth. The center is a liquid iron and nickel core at about 6,000 degrees Celsius. The temperature cools the further we get from the center all the way up to the lithosphere where lava cools down and it turns into the rocks that become the world as we see it. You can think of the plates as floating on top of a boiling pot of water. The Pangaea Supercontinent have you ever noticed how Africa and South America look like they could fit together as if they were puzzle pieces? That is because they actually do! 175 million years ago, all of the present continents on Earth were grouped together into a single landmass called Pangaea. Over time, the continents drifted apart. This is a fact, backed by fossil and geological evidence. Similar rock formations, animal fossils, and plant fossils are found on the coasts of the formerly joined African and South American continents. Not just Africa and South America, but all of the continents on Earth are slowly drifting towards each other or apart at about the speed your fingernails grow, six centimeters per year. What is continental drift? Continental drift was first proposed by Alfred Wegener in 1912. It was met with a bunch of ridicule, but by 1962, Harry Hess proved it to be true. In the 1950s, seafloor mapping showed there was a prominent underwater mountain range with a valley inside. It ran north to south across the entire Atlantic Ocean. Upon closer investigation, it became clear that the points west and east of this rift were slowly but steadily moving apart from each other. The North American plate and the Eurasian tectonic plate were being pushed apart and new seafloor was being formed in the gap that they left behind. Exactly how many plates are there? There are 12 large plates and about 20 smaller plates, depending on how you define them. If you look on this map, you can see most plate boundaries are actually underwater. The plates can be much larger than a continent or much smaller, and even a small country like Iceland can be on two different plates. What happens when the plates interact with each other? Uh, there are four major things that can happen. First, divergent boundaries. A divergent boundary is what we were talking about in the Mid-Atlantic Rift example. The plates are being pushed apart by the magma from the mantle, which eventually fills in the gap as a new seafloor. There is an above-ground divergent boundary in Iceland where you can hike or scuba dive. You can see exactly where the Earth is slowly floating apart in two different directions. Each side is actually on a separate plate. This is also happening at the Great Rift Valley, where the entire eastern side of Africa will eventually become an island in the Indian Ocean, like Madagascar. Second, convergent boundaries. A convergent boundary is when two plates are being pushed into each other. This can result in a mountain range forming. The two continental plates smash into each other and the crust is forced upward. The Himalayan mountain range is where the Indian and Eurasian plate are converging. They used to be at about sea level, but over just 50 million years of being smashed together, the highest mountains on earth were formed. Third, subduction zones. A subduction zone also has two plates being pushed into each other. But, in this case, 
One plate will simply slide under the other instead of being smashed into it at full force. This is especially common where dense oceanic plates meet with lighter continental plates. The oceanic plate slides under. This might make a small coastal mountain range, but most of the oceanic plate is forced back into the hot mantle where it melts. This molten oceanic plate partially melts into hot magma, then it bubbles its way up to the surface, creating volcanoes. If the plates meet underwater, the volcano will be underwater, and if the volcano is tall enough, it will become a new island. The Philippine Islands are partially caused by a subduction zone between six different plates. And because there is so much tectonic activity in this part of the world, it is called the Ring of Fire. And fourth, transform boundaries. A transform boundary is where the plates are sliding parallel to each other. The plates are simply rubbing against each other. Um, these usually cause the worst earthquakes. The San Andreas Fault in California is an example of a transform boundary. So how do these boundaries cause disasters? Along these four types of plate boundaries are where we find the most earthquakes and volcanoes. The Earth's crust is violently grinding together, snapping, shaking, and sometimes being forced down into the mantle. Now the fun stuff, volcanoes. This image shows how most volcanoes are formed. The oceanic crust is forced diagonally under a continental plate. And as it melts, the hot magma boils up. This makes oceanside mountain ranges and results in active volcanoes. Volcanoes can also occur if there is a hot spot in the mantle under the middle of a plate. Yellowstone National Park is an example of this. There is a hot spot below and the crust has already been weakened. When the supervolcano in Yellowstone erupts next, it could release over 1,000 kilometers cubed of ash, rocks, and magma. It could do damage to almost one-third of the United States. Don't worry though, this supervolcano has only erupted three times in history. First it was 2.1 million years ago, then 1.3 million years ago, and most recently 640,000 years ago. The odds of this erupting in our lifetimes is almost zero. The Hawaiian Islands These islands were formed by a hotspot under the oceanic Pacific Plate. As the Pacific Plate slides over the hotspot, it melts and boils up, causing volcanic islands to emerge above the ocean's surface. As you can see, the older island of Kauai used to be over the hotspot 5 million years ago, but it is no longer active. The closer the islands get to the main island of Hawaii, the newer they are. Currently, the big island of Hawaii will continue to grow, and eventually a new island will form to the southeast of it over the hotspot as Hawaii drifts away to the northwest. Earthquakes. Earthquakes happen when two plates get stuck on each other. Force and stress will build up. And when the rocks preventing the plates from sliding snap, there is a huge release of seismic energy as the plates move instantly. It's kind of like a rubber band snapping. Transform faults, where the plates slide past each other, are the cause of the most devastating earthquakes. In 2011, an earthquake moved the entire island of Honshu, Japan, 2.4 meters instantly. This was a magnitude 9 earthquake. The Richter scale and magnitude. The Richter scale is how we measure the strength of an earthquake. It's important to keep in mind that this scale is logarithmic. Every Richter scale number higher actually means 10 times more intensity. So a magnitude 8 earthquake is 10 times stronger than a magnitude 7. And a magnitude 9 is 10 times stronger than a magnitude 8. Why can't we detect earthquakes early enough to prevent disasters? The tectonic plates can be around 100 kilometers thick, which make it impossible to see exactly what is happening in real time. We can predict where volcanoes will erupt and where earthquakes will happen, but predicting when is impossible. All we can say is 
there will be a big earthquake here sometime. For example, Los Angeles and Manila are due for superquakes, which can level the entire cities. It could happen tomorrow, in the next 500 years, or the next thousand years. We don't know when, but we do know it will happen. The last superquake in Los Angeles happened in 1857, and it was only a 7.8 magnitude on the Richter scale. How can we detect earthquakes? Seismographs detect tectonic activity by listening to the ground-shaking seismic waves. They have no predictive power, but can triangulate the epicenter of an earthquake almost immediately. Using seismographs and buoys that measure ocean wave height, tsunami warnings actually do work. Finally, tsunamis. When an earthquake happens underwater, it could create a huge wave heading in many, many directions. In 2004, the 9.3 magnitude Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami gave between 20 minutes warning to Indonesia, 2 hours for Sri Lanka, and 7 hours to Africa. This was not enough time for proper evacuation, as over 200,000 people died. Tsunami waves move almost as fast as a jet plane in the open sea, at 800 kilometers per hour. They slow down to about 40 kilometers per hour as the waves hit the seafloor and they grow in height before impacting land. Will tectonic plates drift forever? No, supercomputer models predict that in 5 billion years, the Earth will cool to the point where everything will grind to a halt and the continents will be locked in place forever. But in just 250 million years from now, all of the Earth's landmass is projected to be smushed back into another single supercontinent like Pangaea. Okay, quick review and we are done. Earth may look static, but it is actually made up of individual tectonic plates moving on top of a liquid hot mantle. Plate tectonics are constantly reshaping our world, and they cause volcanoes, earthquakes, and tsunamis. I hope this helped you understand just how truly dynamic the surface of our planet is. Do you live near a tectonic plate boundary? Please consider subscribing for new videos about science news, education, interviews, and cool animal facts. We'll have a new video every Sunday. Thank you for watching Science Talk TV.